All right, infrared LED. So I've got my bulbs from Amazon, come packaged like this. Uh, basically what you're gonna wanna do is get a X-Acto knife, a fine tip flat screwdriver, a pair of tweezers. And take your flat tip screwdriver and stick it into the side. Now the goal here is to do it at an angle that you're not gonna leave a dent in the plastic body of the bulb. You go around enough, probably two or three times, you're going to get a clean cut and you'll be able to pop it off just like I did here. What I do next is I'm cleaning up all the silicone caulking inside. Uh, this helps adhere the metal back LED circuit board to the actual body, which has a heat sink inside of the LED bulb. Once you've got it free, what you're going to want to do is clean up the board, any remaining silicone, um, and get ready to remove the two wires that attach the board to the body. In this case, I'm trying to pry them up to give myself as much room as I can. Um, already got my soldering iron heated up, so I'm going to use my tweezers to give myself a little bit of leverage. Uh, I didn't quite get this right at the beginning. It took me a little while. I uh, had my heating at 750 degrees Fahrenheit, and I had to go back and bring it up to 800. I wasn't able to get this separated. Now with a metal back circuit board, you have to be a little bit careful they get hot. You don't want to burn yourself. Uh, but it can work in your advantage because it'll hold a little bit of the heat as you're working. And in this case, there isn't any ICs on this board or anything I need to be too cautious of, especially since I'm cutting most of it away. So you can uh, heat this board up pretty well. So I've just popped off both wires. I'm giving myself a little inspection here to make sure everything looks okay. Uh, and now we're ready to move on and take this board uh, after a little bit of final touch up. Got the board separated. Now the reason I'm using the screwdriver is because this is probably a little bit hot at this point. I just straighten out the wires a bit, make it a little easier to put back together later on. I can set this aside. Just checking to make sure it's not too hot. Everything's safe. So now I'm ready to take my knife, do that extra step, a little bit of cleanup. Uh, and then the next step will be actually removing the LED from the circuit board. Now in order to do this, what I do is I place the knife flat against the board and just slightly elevate it. There's a little bit of a metal lip where the uh, metal pads on these LEDs meet the body of the circuit board. Uh, and I just slide it off. Uh, it's going to leave a little bit. Of, it's not going to be a perfect cut. You'll have to come back and you know clean it up a bit. There's going to be some fragments left around the perimeter of the metal pads. Uh, you're going to want to go back and take your knife and just clean up those edges. You can see at this point I've got them all pretty much done and I'm just cleaning up some of the edges here. These are the fragments that I want to get removed. Alright, so at this point what I'm doing is I'm removing the metal pads. This is the last uh, vestige of the LEDs. Basically this would have been part of the entire component. Uh, I had a lot of trouble getting these first pads off. I'm not really sure why. I think I needed to heat up the, the metal back circuit board here. It took me a couple of tries to get this moving. But once I've got it moving, it's all pretty straightforward. I've got my soldering iron at about 800 Fahrenheit at this point, and I'm just kind of chipping along here, removing each pad. I'm not sure if this step is actually necessary. It may be possible to leave the pads, uh, but I prefer to just remove all of the um, fragments and plastic and everything. It gives me the chance to do that. At this point, I'm not going to inject drugs. 
Um, it was frustrating, but it wasn't that frustrating. I'm actually using solder to uh, clean up the pads. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting solder on the pads. There's two pads for each LED. On your board, you'll see them marked 1 through 12. Um, and I'm preparing them for the LEDs. That's what this strip is. This black strip is a little case. And I count out 12. I'll need more later because I made some mistakes here. Uh, but I can just remove the plastic, dump them out, and I'm ready to start applying these LEDs. Uh, I think I ended up wasting half of these. Basically what happened is they got a little burned, maybe they had solar on them in the wrong place. And rather than uh, giving myself a bad up contact in the final part or the final construction, I would just go ahead and throw them away. They're pretty cheap, I didn't feel sad that I was losing them, so uh, no harm here. In this case, I'm applying just the slightest amount of solder, you can watch here, just a little bit to the very edge. And what I've done is I've lined up this LED with the outermost edges of the pads. And these pads are on the circuit board itself. It's no longer the metal pads from the LEDs. So I go ahead, I repeat this process uh, eventually 18 times with the six mistakes I made. Um, I had a lot more success with my first version of this. Uh, there really was no changes in between. I think, I don't know, maybe I was just a little more awake that day. I'm not really sure what happened. But what I found was uh, having flux applied here uh, and having a good clean flat pad. You want to make sure it's not domed. It doesn't have a big blob of solder on it. Uh, made a big difference. So kind of a lesson learned. Maybe save you a little bit of time. But I got there in the end. So with it all done, So here's these extra five. And what I did was I'm just trying to line them up a little bit better. And I found I actually needed one more. Okay, so we're ready to take this assembly and put it back on the bulb body. Now that, that's the body, you see the top middle here. Uh, inside there's a, I presume, aluminum heat sink. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just checking for continuity to see if there's any problems. Uh, this, this was kind of unnecessary in this case so I'll skip ahead past it but generally speaking when you're doing this kind of work you want to go back after your work and make sure everything is flowing and there's no uh, short circuits or anything I'm inspecting all the joints and solder looks good so at this point I'm comfortable moving ahead now what I'm doing is I'm up now what I'm doing is I'm attaching the wires which are part of the body of the bulb and actually part of the power supply inside back to the circuit board for the LEDs. Uh, this gets pretty hot so I'm just using my X-Acto knife as a little bit of a heat shield for my thumb as I hold the board and wire in place. And this is not a difficult step. Now before I wrap this up what I do is I take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and I clean up all the flux that's still on the board and just give it a bit of a clean up. I think this will kind of help extend the lifetime of your board, but honestly when you're doing a Frankenstein project like this, um, there's no guarantees on lifetime anyways. Okay, now I'm ready to pop everything back together. So take your dome, Pop it in place and you're all done. That's that.